Welcome to the highlights of uh, the second day of the fifth Cornhill test at Old Trafford. A great day yesterday, great for excitement anyway, and uh, very much Australia's day with England finishing up at 175 for nine. Today, conditions very much better than yesterday. Quite a cloud cover around, but uh, there was a promise of that breaking and plenty of blue sky was forecast for later in the day. And uh, that should have been to the advantage of uh, the side batting and the Australians could well have expected that uh, would refer to them very, very quickly. Just one more wicket to take, and that shouldn't provide too much trouble, or should it? We've seen so many strange things happen uh, in this series to date. Nothing is impossible, I promise you. Well, here's the second over of the morning, and uh, it's young Michael Whitney coming into bowl to Paul Allett, who is nine not out overnight. Three runs have been added, 178 for nine it is now. And uh, in the commentary box, Tom Graveney and Jim Laker. And in trouble here, I would think. Oh, what a terrible throw. Oh, he's got five. <laughs> and that's possibly about the worst throw I've seen in a test match for years. He wasn't uh, within ten yards of that. Well, that's live and old Trafford up. Whitney's still in action. Oh, that's a lovely shot. <laughs> right out of the book. Perfect illustration of the leg glance, giving Rodney Marsh no chance at all as it raced away for four. So Hughes moving over from mid off to mid on as Allett faces Lily. And that's a good looking shot, and uh, that brings up 200. That only brings 200 up, but it gives uh, Paul Allett his high score in first class cricket. And that's quite a performance to come into a test match and make your best ever score at number 10 when your side are in trouble. Oh, that's a cracking shot. <laughs> will probably give Bob Willis more enjoyment than taking five wickets. Oh, almost a smile hovering around Mike Braley's face there now. And good reason, because these uh, late order of batsmen once again have done him proud. And that's a very good shot indeed. It really is a classic square cut. And a great effort by Wellham, but an unsuccessful one. Well, I don't know if Lancashire knew that this boy was a batsman, but there's no doubt that he is. This is a magnificent square cut. Not a very intelligent piece of bowling, mind you, but uh, he did well to reach that, too. And he crashed it square. Ooh. And uh, there is the 50 partnership. That wasn't quite such a good shot, but he got a little bottom edge on it, and it is four runs over the top of the stumps. 227 for nine, and now the highest stand of the innings. Oh, he's done it again. Would you believe it? <laughs> Paul Hallett has made 50 in his first test match. And the crowd rise to salute a new hero of Old Trafford. That could be the end of it. Hughes underneath it. Yes, Willis holding out for 11, and England all out for 231. So a last wicket stand of 56. And I did say nothing was impossible, and uh, it certainly wasn't. 52 not out for Paul Allett, his highest score in first-class cricket. What a way to do it in your first test match. And apart from anything else, I thought he played very well. He played straight. Played some handsome strokes and uh, showed a good defence as well. Bob Willis gave him good support. No one pretends, least of all Willis, that he's a good batsman. But those 11 runs and the partnership of 56 for the last wicket, absolutely priceless to England to give them 231. And what a memory for Paul Allett. That's the way he scored his runs. That highest score in first-class cricket, 52 not out. And uh, look at the preponderance of uh, runs when he was batting at this Stratford end. That's the one at the bottom of that car drawn up by our scorer Wendy Wimbush. He scored a lot of runs on the offside in front of and just behind point 
and on the leg side between Backward Square and down to Fine Leg. Not much at the other end when he was facing that uh, old campaigner, Dennis Lilly, who finished up taking four for 55 in 24.1 overs and eight maidens. Terry Alderman, who yesterday broke Lilly's wicket-taking record in Test Series in England, finished with four for 88, but very surprising. It wasn't used this morning until late. I just can't see any reason for him not to come on and open the bowling with Lilly this morning. Whitney, two for 50, did very, very well in his first test. He's uh, a young lad who's played just a few games for New South Wales, but um, he'll do much more in uh, the international field before he's finished. He may have been a surprise choice, but uh, he certainly bowled well. Right, well, the Australians, 231 in arrears when they started, and uh, plenty of fireworks in store in the session up to lunch. Here's the first over. Bob Willis has taken the new ball for England. Graham Wood is taking strike, and in the commentary box uh, with Peter Parfitt is Christopher Martin Jenkins. Well, there was the invitation to hook, and Wood accepted, and that was nowhere near a fine leg. It was beautifully played in front of square. A very solid stroke indeed. And that's four more, and uh, I don't think this... Man, it's gone indeed for six. It was beautifully picked up by Graham Wood. and for England John Dyson goes without scoring and England have broken through trying to fend it away there on the offside and a very neat catch that's one of the more unorthodox strokes of the morning and you can throw in any of the ones played by Paul Allett and Bob Willis it gets uh, Kim Hughes off the mark, so it'll be a, a great relief for him. Oh, that's out. That is Plum. Two wickets in the one over. Bob Willis after Graham Wood hit him for four and six in his first over. His hundredth wicket against Australia was the one that took Dyson, and now Hughes has gone. 24 for two. Yes, I think it's held up and he's gone. Yellick doesn't want to go. He thinks it hit the ground before it was caught, but it's held up by both of them. That slip, umpire constant gives him. And three wickets in and over to Willis. That one from the last delivery. That's out. And Allett takes his first test match wicket, 24 for 4 Australia, and the whole thing is in tatters. It's a loosener from both of them, and really loosened up by Kent. 53 for 4, short run from Bob Willis. And runs there for Alan Border, very firmly hit pull shot. Both of them right arm around the wicket now to Border. What a catch, David Gower. A brilliant piece of fielding that, one of the best catches you'll see in a year of cricket. The fifth Australian wicket goes down in the last over before lunch. Border caught Gower by both of them, 11. Kent remains 21, not out. And what a session. What a performance that was. 58 for five. The Australians, they were 24 for four at one stage. At lunchtime, 58 for five. And uh, just three batsmen there into double figures. Wood, who was Allett's uh, first test match victim. And uh, Border, 11. Kent, 21 not out. And uh, what a performance. That really was almost as disastrous as uh, Headingley and Edgbaston. Well, Bob Willis was the destroyer there. Three wickets in the one over. Here he is now, straight away after lunch, coming into bowl to Rodney Marsh. Oh, and that 
was a ridiculous stroke by Rodney Marsh. He'll kick himself, both of them taking a simple catch. It was a sharp one, he made it look easy. Willis takes his fourth wicket, and Australia are 59 for six. And Marsh first going to play a stroke, then deciding he'd take the bat away, and the result was that he just simply edged it straight to both of them. And Australia are in total disarray at 59 for six. And that's an example of those lovely strokes he was playing before lunch. He's a marvellous player off the back foot, Martin Kent, used to the hard wickets at the Gabba at Brisbane and uh, beautifully struck. Pleasantly timed. And indeed, four runs. Effortless stroke by Ray Bright. Doesn't have much of a back lift, but... Uh, I think it's fair. It, it was a half volley, wasn't it? You know, and by every sense of the w uh, word and the game, clearly that is a ball that should be going for four with an attacking field. And that's perfectly safe. Absolutely crash off the middle of the bat. Whether as he played the shot he was quite certain where it was going, I wouldn't be 100% certain. Kent, with that splendid shot, reaching a, a really fine 50 in all the circumstances, which has come in remarkably quick time. And indeed, off only 43 balls, and that was his seventh four. And bringing up the 100 in only the 20th over of the innings. That looks like two more. that away with all these might through the covers possibly the one which carried straight on with the arm from Embry we'll have to see it from another angle to decide on that but a little edge and Alan not doing the rest so Kent's splendid innings ending at 104 Australia 104 for seven and that's another of the many milestones passed in this series <laughs> has had the better of that in a slightly unorthodox way. Drinks are ready to come out. We have Derek Underwood on the right and Trevor Chapel on the left doing the job. It's well bowled and uh, he got it away. In the end, it was the quicker ball from Embury. It was very well struck by Ray Bright, but it was that curving top spinner that goes a little bit with the arm. Well, Willis is at deep back at square, but uh, neither he nor Boycott will be able to save that. It's a well-judged stroke by Lilly. It's fair to go past the 120 mark. a straightforward catch. You can't have anything more straightforward than that. To Graham Goose behind square leg. Don't think Lily could believe it for a moment. This really is Botham's uh, half year, isn't it? He can do anything at the moment, whereas he couldn't do a thing early in the summer. Just comes on, rolls over his arm, and Lily cracks it away behind square leg. 
and Graham Gooch didn't have to move a whisker. Lily caught Gooch, bowled both them 13. And he's rolled them all over the place. That goes to Lake Stump, another success for Paul Allett, so he's having a very good day. Undefeated 50 with the bat, and this is first test match, and now his second wicket. 126 to 9, the Australians tumble down to, and Whitney goes, as they say, without troubling the scores. 26 for 9 as Alderman faces his first ball. Roared in by the crowd. And got an inside edge, Bob Willis will have to hurry. And out came the big right boot. And Alderman comes through for two. Both McGinn to Bright, Bright now in 22. And he's gone, little edge through to the keeper, simple chance to Alan Knott and Australia all out in dramatic style here for 130, giving England a lead of 101 runs here on first innings. As I was walking around the back of the ground, someone said to me, how on earth are you going to describe that? Well, the answer, I'm afraid, is that uh, it's indescribable. Just one innings there over the 50 mark, a very good one too from Martin Kent, 52. Brighton Lily, 22 and 13 down the bottom of the order. But I wonder uh, what those England bowlers were thinking. They must reckon it's a pretty easy game. 30.2 overs they needed to bowl out the whole of Australia with uh, Willis taking four for 63, Allett two for 17, Botham three for 28 and Embury one for 16. A very, very disappointing performance from the Australians and there really wasn't very much in that pitch. Well, England started off uh, their second innings, 101 ahead. They added two more and we're in the third over now and Lilly is coming in to bowl to Graham Gooch. In the commentary box uh, with Peter Parfitt is Jim Laker. And that's a lovely shot. Tickled away fine down the leg side. And Gooch very noticeably there, getting into position very quickly. left the leg stump open and he's knocked it over so Graham Gooch goes bowled by Alderman Alderman strikes again and Gooch goes for five England losing the first wicket here in the second innings with just seven on the board Jim Laker saying he didn't think Dennis Lilly had quite the same sharp edge at the moment as he has had in years gone past and I think I agree with that to find the blunt edge. Well, I'm doing the chasing and we'll just catch it. no third man and that um, scoring pattern chart we showed you a little earlier would always indicate to me that for Tavare you'd need either a fourth slip and uh, a very wide third man or at very least a third man still plays quite straight with the angle bat Mike Braley in conversation there with uh, two of the England selectors, Charlie Elliott on the left of your picture and John Edridge in the middle. And that uh, sky behind the score box there doesn't look too welcoming, does it? But uh, as long as it doesn't rain until half past six, we should be happy. <laughs> two more to boycott, Hughes the field up. And 
that's more like the boycott of old. Lily off his short run, a nice friendly pace, and uh, punched away on the offside off the back foot. Today, but Tavry keeping it down well and bringing up the 50. That shrewdly placed by Boycott, got into position quickly, put it away through mid wicket, just got three for it. Very bright, bowling it in, saving the throw now. Again, this big crowd, you invent to their feelings. Their percentage of Manchester United supporters here today. Looking up there and now applauding the 50 partnership. Also, getting in good voice for the coming season across the road. With the uh, Alderman coming back on. Having a crack now from this uh, Stretford end, taking over from Whitney. It's a beautiful drive, off drive, Whitney giving chase, no chance of stopping it. Beautiful off drive from the back to Kemp's Chris Stavery there. And with him at uh, the close of play was Yorkshire's Geoffrey Boycott, 31 not out, and I suspect needing a few runs as well. Quite a solid performance from that pair. They didn't play it, miss it and miss it uh, very much at all, and that was a good sound performance that's taken them on to a lead of uh, 100 and 71 and that is quite a formidable one just the one wicket down that of graham gooch in the second innings well the australians will feel very very desperate at the moment it hasn't been their day at all whereas the first day was very much theirs today that partnership between allett and willis absolutely destroyed them this morning as indeed the one between botham and dilly did at the tail at uh, the headingley test match they really can't get through the bottom of the england order and it's costing them dear they're batting today was very, very poor. It's one of the worst batting displays I've seen, and that's saying something when we think about Edgbaston. The bowlers have a tremendous task in front of them to contain the England batsmen, and that England team, they really must be wondering what this game is all about. And two of them in particular today, uh, worthy of mention at the close of our programme, Paul Allett, who later was to take his first test match wicket, finished up with a half century in his first test, and that's his highest score in first-class cricket. Tremendous performance from him and the other man, Bob Willis, who wrecked the Australian innings with those three wickets in the one over.